Lauren, there were so many jerks in the news recently. How did we pick this week's This Fucking Guy? Well, Alyssa, it was a tight race for a while. Assholes have had another huge week. Luckily, one special fucking guy rose to the occasion, setting himself apart as not only a real piece of work, but also somebody who's such a dangerous wacko that we could barely fit all of his nutbaggery into this short video. I'm talking, of course, about the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. From everything I've learned about Johnson since he rose from the fourth most popular Mike Johnson on Instagram to second in line to the presidency is yikes. But what I've picked up mostly is that he's a nutcase who calls himself a Christian but follows a version of Jesus who lives in his imagination and exists only to justify being as cruel to gay people and women as possible. Yes, yes. One thing that struck me about all the coverage of Johnson and his awfulness in the days since he's become speaker is that they're all kind of talking about the downside and not talking about the upside. Yes, Johnson is a terrifying zealot, but he's also in over his head. He's the least experienced Speaker of the House in 140 years. He has only been in Congress, Alyssa, since 2017. I've got bras older than his career. We both do. <laughs> but to look at it glass half full style, he's out of step with most Americans in exactly the way that Democrats want to remind people that Republicans are way out of step with most Americans. Absolutely obsessed with the genitalia of trans kids, the bedrooms of gay people, and the reproductive organs of women. Exactly the sort of thing voters don't like. It sounds like the GOP just elected a Democratic campaign ad Speaker of the House. And in that spirit, I'm ready to learn more about this human supercut of wacky ideas. Well, Mike Johnson was born in Shreveport, Louisiana in early 1972, the oldest of four children. Johnson has said that he was the product of a teenage pregnancy, which he mentions a lot when he talks about the origins of his rabid anti-abortion stance. His parents would go on to divorce, which he doesn't talk about as much when he publicly discusses his rabid anti-divorce stance. I'm no psychologist here, but I've seen a lot of Marvel movies, and this sounds a lot like a very obvious villain origin story. Why is your parents' divorce our problem, Mike? Yeah, like former Speaker McCarthy's dad, current House Speaker Mike Johnson's dad, was a firefighter. Mike idolized his dad and wanted to follow in his professional footsteps. But after his father suffered burns on 80% of his body, his dad demanded that Mike do anything but become a firefighter. And so instead of becoming a firefighter, Mike Johnson became a professional bigot. I really didn't know that you could go pro in that. Alyssa, have you ever seen a Ryan Murphy TV show and thought that the homophobic characters were much too restrained and nuanced? Then, you, mm -hmm. then you'll love Mike Johnson. If there was a bigotry hall of fame, Johnson would be well on his way to being voted in on the first ballot. He spent decades working for the ADF, or Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a very ironic name, because it's a fringe but well-moneyed far-right organization that defends so-called conservative court cases. Think evil ACLU. The ADF was behind getting Roe v. Wade overturned, several court cases defending the right of businesses to refuse service to gay people, and has fought to uphold anti-sodomy laws, which would criminalize same-sex relationships. I just want to point out here that people need to understand that sodomy means any sexual encounter that is not P and V, which means anti-sodomy laws would outlaw blowjobs. Every frat boy in America should be up in arms about this. From what I have read about Johnson, he is bizarrely obsessed with hating gay people. Like, do you know how when you talk to a kid in their dinosaur phase and all they want to do is talk about dinosaurs? Mike Johnson is like that, but was saying weird things about gay people. Kevin Spacey's character in American Beauty levels of obsessed. I think we can all agree that Mike Johnson would be played by Kevin Spacey in a movie. That creepy hint of a smile, the dead eyes, the quiet rage that radiates from him. Perfect casting. Back in the mid-aughts when Johnson was a lawyer with ADF, he wrote multiple local newspaper editorials espousing outlandishly homophobic beliefs. In one, he wrote, quote, Your race, creed, and sex are what you are, while homosexuality and cross-dressing are things you do. This is a free country, but we don't give special protections for every person's bizarre choices. Hmm. In another op-ed, Johnson wrote, quote, Homosexual relationships are inherently unnatural, and the studies clearly show are ultimately harmful and costly for everyone. Society cannot give its stamp of approval to such a dangerous lifestyle. If we change marriage for this tiny, modern minority, we will have to do it for every deviant group. Polygamists, polyamorous, pedophiles, and others will be next in line to claim equal protection. They already are. There will be no legal basis to deny a bisexual the right to marry a partner of each sex or a person to marry his pet. What? 
foresight, Aaron. Famously, since Obergefell legalized gay marriage, the next great progressive cause has to be legalizing human pet marriages. <laughs> Johnson spearheaded an effort in Louisiana to make gay marriage illegal, suing over the fact that same-sex partners of New Orleans City employees were given benefits. He sued over that. At the time, Johnson said, we are not trying to tie homosexuality to pedophilia, but when you tear down one barrier, others fall. Let's stop here and draw the line here, because then it leads to sexual anarchy. Sexual anarchy. Sounds fun. Of course, as you could probably guess, Johnson also supports a nationwide ban on gender-affirming care for trans youth. In 2022, he introduced the Stop Sexualization of Children Act, which was never brought to the floor. The bill prohibits federal funds from being used for, quote, any sexually oriented program, event, or literature for children under the age of 10, and its definition of sexually oriented material includes any topic involving gender identity, gender dysphoria, transgenderism, sexual orientation, or related subjects. Calm down, dude. Here's another example of Mike Johnson being a total dork. In 2005, there were these nationwide Day of Silence protests that were meant to address anti-gay biases in colleges. And Johnson and his cronies spearheaded a college counter-protest for the same day, dubbed the Day of Truth. They made t-shirts and everything. The t-shirt said, the truth cannot be silenced. Johnson said at the time that anti-gay protesters were, quote, sharing the truth out of love and compassion and called the, quote, homosexual lifestyle dangerous. Reminds me of that episode of Arrested Development where Job joins the group of magicians that poses behind a sign that reads, we demand to be taken seriously. But just to contextualize this, Johnson's views are undoubtedly fringe. According to a June 2023 Gallup poll, 71% of Americans support gay marriage, the highest level of support ever. Even today, half of Republicans support the right to same-sex marriage. Well, Alyssa... Those aren't the only zany ideas Mike Johnson has about marriage. Mike married his wife Kelly in 1999 in what's known as a covenant marriage. A covenant marriage is the kind of marriage that's contractually more difficult to dissolve than regular marriages. People in covenant marriages are only allowed to get a divorce if one of them commits a felony or is about to go to prison, is physically or sexually abusive to the other, or commits adultery. Johnson also spearheaded an effort in Louisiana to make covenant marriages legal, saying at the time, quote, because so few people have chosen covenant marriage in Louisiana, it seems like an unpopular idea. It's not unpopular. It's just unknown. Once the message is out there, a whole lot more people will choose it. Divorce sounds like it's already a big enough pain in the ass without all the extra red tape. You are right. Between 2000 and 2010, when ostensibly plenty of people were hearing about the existence of covenant marriages being legal in Louisiana, only 1% of couples opted for covenant marriages. In other states where it's an option, the numbers are similarly dismal. It's a bad idea that nobody likes. But like so many of Mike Johnson's bad ideas, the fact that nobody likes them has not dissuaded him. Johnson has attacked no-fault divorce, calling it a scheme that is partly to blame for America's moral decay. Another weird detail in the Mike Johnson story, Johnson and his wife have four biological children, all of whom appear in family photos on the congressman's website and in his office. But he's also talked publicly about a fifth child, a 14-year-old black boy named Michael that Johnson says he and his wife adopted when they were in their mid-20s. Johnson has likened the adoption to the movie The Blind Side, bad reference given what we know now. The New York Times looked for this mysterious adopted son who's only 10 years younger than Johnson, but could find no evidence that the Johnsons actually legally adopted the boy. Johnson once found himself in hot water with fellow Republicans when he acknowledged that Michael, as a black boy, occasionally faced racism in America. But Eventually, he walked it back. To the GOP, racism in America is like a horror movie monster that only appears if you admit it exists. Yeah, the Candyman is summoned when the words critical race theory are said three times into a mirror. Okay, so let's get into Johnson's wacky ideas on women, shall we? Consider my loins girded. After Hurricane Katrina, Johnson wrote an op-ed in a local newspaper, his favorite place to be insane, apparently. He partly blamed the state's female governor, Kathleen Blanco, on the looting that happened in the wake of the disaster, calling her a, quote, nurturer rather than a firm, decisive leader. What do you mean by that, Mike? Johnson also wrote, the Bible teaches that man has an inherently sinful nature capable of all kinds of evil. What we are seeing is the natural byproduct of a culture that increasingly denies God's existence, makes excuses for immorality, and fosters a sense of entitlement and victim mentality amongst the poor. Hmm. Mike Johnson must have read a different Bible than I did. 
Yeah, and for a person who lacks the capacity to give birth, Mike Johnson sure has a lot of opinions about who should be legally required to give birth. Surprise, surprise. Mike Johnson has called abortion a, quote, holocaust, even going so far as to tie the exercise of reproductive freedom to Hitler. Reproductive mm. freedom historically has been one of the first things that fascists take away from women in their countries, but go off, Mike. Johnson supports a nationwide ban on abortion and has stated repeatedly that life begins at conception. Just going to lift my Vivek Ramaswamy finger and add this right here. Medically speaking, pregnancy does not even begin at conception. Pregnancy begins five to 10 days after fertilization when the blastocyst implants into the wall of the uterus. There is no pregnancy test that exists that can tell if a woman's body contains a fertilized egg that has not yet implanted. Johnson's anti-science life begins at conception gobbledygook actually takes the science of pregnancy and rewrites it into a fantasy where the male body is responsible for creating life and not the female body. That means if Mike Johnson and his ilk are allowed to make up the rules, birth control is on the chopping block. IUDs are on the chopping block. Plan B is on the chopping block. IVF is on the chopping block. Birth control, by the way, is incredibly popular. 92% of Americans say this is morally acceptable. During a House Judiciary Committee hearing, Johnson recently implied that abortion is ruining the economy. Roe v. Wade gave constitutional cover to the elective killing of unborn children in America, period. You think about the implications of that on the economy. We're all struggling here to, to cover the bases of Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and all the rest. If we had all those able-bodied workers in the economy, we wouldn't be going upside down and toppling over like this. Listen, the gentleman I, I will not yield. I will not. Do you hear that, ladies? Put yourself through childbirth and feed your babies to the Ponzi scheme of late capitalism. Oh, man. I'm sorry to say that his views only get weirder. Here's something he said to reporter Arin Carmon in 2015 when he was arguing an anti-abortion case before the Supreme Court. Quote, many women use abortion as a form of birth control, you know, in certain segments of society. Oh, I wonder what segments you mean, Mike. What do you mean by that? <laughs> and it's just shocking and sad. But this is where we are. When you break up the nuclear family, when you tell a generation of people that life has no value, no meaning, that it's expendable, then you do wind up with school shooters. Citation needed, Mike. Just popping in here to clock how out of sync Johnson's views are compared to the American people. A 2023 Gallup poll found that support for abortion rights is very high. 85% of Americans believe that abortion should be legal in all or some circumstances. Only 13% believe it should be illegal in all circumstances. 61% of Americans who responded to the survey said they disapproved of the Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. And abortion is a winning issue at the polls. Since Roe was overturned, ballot measures that expand or protect abortion rights are undefined defeated in the voting booth. Knock wood. I have knocked on my head here. <laughs> but wait, abortion and divorce aren't the only things that Mike Johnson thinks cause school shootings. Does he blame the guns? Because it's the guns. Wishful thinking, Alyssa. Mike Johnson also blames the teaching of evolution. People say, how can a young person go into their schoolhouse and open fire on their classmates? Because we've taught a whole generation, a couple of generations now of Americans, that there is no right and wrong that it's about survival of the fittest and you evolve from the primordial slime. Why is that life of any sacred value? Because there's nobody sacred to whom it's owed. Last week, Johnson blamed the, quote, hearts of Americans for mass shootings in the wake of one of the deadliest shootings in recent history in Lewiston, Maine. Mike Johnson out here recycling his blame school shootings on everything but the guns material. It's his version of what's the deal with the airline food joke? It should come as no surprise that, like many of his fellow Republicans, Mike Johnson has done fuck all to protect children in schools from mass shooters. In fact, just days after 18 people were killed by a semi-automatic rifle in Lewiston, the NRA posted an ad bragging of its close relationship with the new Speaker of the House. Stay classy, NRA. Yeah, Johnson was also among the OGs in Congress who did not support aiding Ukraine in its efforts to defend itself against the Russian invasion, saying instead that the money was wasted when America needed it domestically to defend the southern border from immigrants and help address the ongoing baby formula shortage. Oh, was Mike Johnson one of the 12 Republicans who broke from their party and supported the Infant Formula Supplemental Appropriations Act, a bill that was meant to address the infant formula shortage? No, he voted against it. Voted against it. Johnson also voted against the PACT Act, which proposed increased benefits to the estimated 3.5 million service members who were exposed to toxic burn pits in the Middle East. You might remember it as the law that John Stewart went to the mat for last summer. 
That law eventually passed and was signed into law, but no thanks to Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson also supports term limits for other people. When he was running for Congress in 2016, he signed a document stating, quote, I pledge that as a member of Congress, I will co-sponsor and vote for the U.S. term limits amendment of three House terms. Lissa, he's in his fourth term. And un- you don't say. <laughs> I know. Could you believe it? And unlike the Jesus he claims to worship so ardently, Mike Johnson famously dislikes immigrants. He's alluded to the racist Great Replacement Theory, which alleges that Democrats want to fill the country with, quote, illegals who will vote for them and turn the country into a Democratic stronghold with a permanent white minority. Hmm. Okay. Also, Johnson was instrumental in forming the legal arguments that tried to will the fantasy that Biden's win was fraudulent into reality, using only the power of MAGA delusion. Remember the Texas versus Pennsylvania amicus brief that Kevin McCarthy and 125 other Republicans signed on to try to overturn the 2020 election? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Well, Mike Johnson was the leader of the DeLulu PAC. He organized and led its filing. He even emailed every Republican member of Congress to solicit signatures, saying that Trump was, quote, anxiously awaiting the final list. In fact, according to the New York Times, many of the 139 Republicans who voted against certifying the election relied on Johnson's legal arguments, with the Times calling him the, quote, most important architect of the Electoral College objections. However, when asked by a reporter about his involvement, this is what he had to say. Mr. Johnson, you helped lead the efforts to overturn the 2020 election results. Do you And Alyssa, guess where Mike Johnson was on January 6th? Where? Aaron, where was he? He was praying to have the election results overturned. He was he was literally asking to speak to the manager about the American election. Uh, well, he Karen. God did answer his prayers, but the answer was no, dude. I don't think Mike Johnson and the real Jesus would get along very well. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, oh, listen, one more thing before we go. I saved a little treat for the end. So Mike Johnson and his wife Kelly actually have something in common with you and I. Is it that they often quote the line from season two of The White Lotus where Jennifer Coolidge goes, These gays, they're trying to murder me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but close. Uh, They have a podcast. It is called Truth Be Told, and it analyzes current events from a, quote, Christian perspective. I'm going to read a few reviews from their pod, which I pulled from Apple Podcasts. Truth be told, you're a fake fascist Christian. Nothing like a couple of fake Christians bending the Bible to fit their narrative. You both are why many are running from Christianity and never looking back. You are full of hate and lies. And Alyssa, here's my favorite one-star review. Menaces to society. These perverts are a danger to our country. (laughs) (laughs) And look, while we would never encourage people to go review bomb the podcast of a homophobic zealot who thinks The Handmaid's Tale is a romantic comedy... We're not not encouraging you. Alyssa, on a scale of one to five weasels, where do you rank House Speaker Mike Johnson? I feel like he's a solid four. Okay. Because I think he's actually too stupid to be as dangerous as some of the other people that we talk about. Okay. Okay. I would give him a three, and here's why. Okay. Because I really do appreciate that he's saying the quiet part loud. Like, this is Mm -hmm. exactly what we as progressives, as Democrats, want Republicans to be highlighting about themselves, that they're completely out of step with most voters, that they have ideas that are ridiculously freedom-hating. So I give him a three because he's so out and proud about it, but he is deeply a weasel. And I think his ADF lawyering really puts him high up Mm. there on the weasel list for sure. But, you know, three weasels, I'm a tough grader. I give weasels out left and right. (laughs) In all seriousness, we can and should absolutely be shouting what a freak Mike Johnson is from the rooftops. Because even though he's way out of step with the reality of what Americans actually want for themselves and their country, he's not out of step with his party. He perfectly encapsulates what a GOP minority wants to turn our country into, a Christian ethnostate where women are legally subservient to their husbands and gay and trans people aren't allowed to exist. That's his whole deal. And the more Americans see it, the better chance we have of getting the stench of bigotry out of the halls of Congress in 2024. And viewers, if you would relish taking the speaker's gavel away from Mike Johnson next year, head to votesaveamerica.org. They've got a ton of information there about upcoming statewide elections and about what we need to do to give Mike Johnson the one-star review from the American people that he so richly deserves. See you next time.